dimensions. Men can attempt to write one or two things about you, but it's a caricature. It's a miniature expression of what you are. Because the day will come when, if you enter a hall, because you breathed oxygen in that hall, everybody in that hall is blessed. <laughs> you don't know we breathe on people and demons leave them. That's the realm we operate in. But it takes laws and principles to function in this realm. Just as a way of starting, what is a principle? A principle is a fundamental set of truth. It's a fundamental set of truth upon which systems, beliefs, or behaviors are built. So when you find a belief system, when you find a behavioral pattern, when you find ideologies and methodologies, they don't just exist on their own. There are sets of truth that are at the foundation of every belief system. There are sets of truths that are the foundation of every behavioral pattern. There are sets of truths that are the foundation of every manifestation you see. Those unseen set of truths that determines those manifestations are what we call principles. So when you see a man behave in a certain way, there are principles that rule his life. Some of them are consciously imputed, some are unconsciously imputed. But by all means, there are principles that rule everyone. So every man who has a belief system is functioning by a set of truth. Those set of truths are what we call principles. Now, what is a law? Laws are inherent principles. So you see, principles are set of truth that form belief systems. Laws, on the other hand, are inherent or imbibed. Principles that become a part of you. Inherent principles that regulate the nature of life. So when somebody imbibes a principle until it becomes the nature of his life, that principle imbibed has become a law to that person. So inherent principles that regulate the nature of life and relationship and guarantees fulfillment are laws. So whatever it is that regulates the nature of your existence, whatever it is that governs your relationship, and whatever it is that brings fulfillment to your life has become a law to you. So these are some of the things we want to look at. The ones scriptures highlight as indicators or parameters for producing dominion. Praise the name of the Lord. Why do we study these principles and these laws? You know, I began teaching you two weeks ago on realms of intimacy. And I told you there are seven realms of intimacy. The first realm of intimacy is to know about God. That does not profit you. It only excites you. The second realm of intimacy is to understand the principles of the kingdom. That will give you an advantage in life. That's what we are trying to consider. The third realm of intimacy is to know God by experience. That one is not necessarily about success in life. That one is about becoming like him. So a man can know Jesus and become like Jesus, but he may fail in life. Even though the third level is more important, the second level should be included. Because without every contradiction, the less is included in the greater. So when a man knows Jesus and is so much like Jesus, but is failing in life, it's because he violated one of the cadres of intimacy. He violated the cadre of principle. So as important as praying to know God is, as important as meditating on scriptures in order to grow in the spirit is, it must reflect in your natural life. It must reflect in your existence. The reason is because if it doesn't, that area of your life where you suffer dominion will become a gate through which the devil will torment you. And the reason many people fall today is not because their love for God is questionable. Make no mistakes about that. They love God to the core. But there are too many openings in their lives that give the devil an advantage over them. So their financial life is porous. Their health is porous. Everything about them is so porous that the devil can buffet them from morning to night. And the point comes when it becomes too much, they break. So if a man wants to really grow in God, he must understand how principles work so that he puts that part of his life intact and locks those gates away from demons so that when he begins to press into God, 
there will be nothing that distracts him. If a man understands the principle, for example, for wealth creation, and he creates a robust wealth system, he can go to prayer for seven days and seven nights. Because while he's yet praying, he's making money. While he's sleeping, he's making money. For such a man, the devil cannot come and distract him with finances. But a man who has not built a financial structure, God may tell him, wait upon me for three days. After the first day, the wife will break the door down and say, if you don't come out, our child will not go to school tomorrow. And even if he tries to pray, he will be hearing school fees, school fees, school fees. If he ignores that child, around 10 a.m., they will come back from school and they will tell him they drove the child from school. God will be waiting, but he can't see God because he will be distracted. That's why principles, laws are very important because that aspect of our life cannot be ignored. When the devil came to Jesus, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. What does that mean? That means man also lives by bread. There is no man that lives only on the word of God. Every man lives on bread and the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That means bread is an important aspect of a man's life. And the way to win the battle of, 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 of oppression in life is to understand how dominion works. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, there are four principles that I, wish I will share with you now. And then there are six laws that I will give to you now. If you understand these principles, understand these laws and put them to work, happy are you. We don't succeed because things are easy. We succeed because we understand superior laws. Planes don't fly because they become light. Planes fly because they impose a law superior to gravity. That's why they fly. We are not on earth because God kept us here. We are on earth because gravity insists that we should be here. If you remove gravity from here, we will all float from the earth realm. So there are laws that make for things to happen. And so you must know those laws, master those laws, in order to have victory in life. Four principles I want to share with you quickly. Number one is the principle of desire and expectation. These principles are celestial and they are eternal. The reason is because it's not only men that apply them. Even angels apply these principles. When you see men who dominate in life, when you see men who win in life, check them out. Their life is full of irresistible desire and unbreakable expectations. Those expectations are energy generators in the spirit. When a man begins to build desire consciously, and generate so much expectation, he even he, he enforces and insists on drawing the attention of spirits. Because even spirits are attracted to people that have desires. Spirits are attracted to people that have strong expectations. So apart from the fact that desires generate energy, desires also provokes the attention of spirits. That's why every man you see winning in life is a man with desires that cannot be taken. It's a man with expectations that cannot be broken. The reason is because if you don't have a spiritual advantage in this life, you will fail. And one of the things that attracts spirits to your atmosphere is the kind of desire you have. Have you seen, have you been to a power meeting before? Where a cameraman stands in front of an anointed person and he's saying, take it. And it looks as if the cameraman is cast with iron. No anointing ever touch him. Has it occurred to you why the cameraman never fall under the anointing? The reason is because they have no expectation of receiving. Their desire is not towards receiving. The attention of the cameraman is to capture the moment. So why you are saying take it, he's trying to get the right angle. His expectation is the angle. Angle is his problem, not receiving. Whereas there's another person at the overflow who is, has made up his mind already that even if the man comes, I will receive something. For that kind of person, before you say take, he's already under the power. And then you think the cameraman is, is, no, it's not like he's shielded from the anointing. His lack of expectation to receive and his lack of desire to connect to it insulates him from the anointing. That's how life is. When a man doesn't have desire or expectation, even if God is standing with him, nothing will happen around him. Because his lack of expectation, we isolate him and insulate him away from God. Have you seen people, they are struggling. 
They are begging for money every day. But they never generate desire for a, a peaceful life. They never build desire for a prosperous life. They are just thinking of what they will eat tomorrow or eat today. And the moment they have enough to eat today, they say, thank you, Jesus. Ah, you have blessed us. And tomorrow we always take them unawares. But there's another man that is still in primary school. And why he's in primary school, he said he's a president. And from primary school, he's building that expectation, building that desire. It affects the way he dresses. It affects the way he walks. It affects the way he talks. Whether he likes it or not, the forces of nature will gravitate towards him. The spirit will gravitate towards him. Because they know this man is generating energy that we cannot resist. Did you not read Genesis chapter 18 verse 19? God said, I know Abraham my servant. Seeing that he will be great, I cannot hide anything from him. God perceived that this guy will be great. So a point called God said, I can't. Even if I want to. This guy will be great. There is a level of expectation you build. Demons and angels begin to look for you. Because your desire and expectation may be intangible in the natural realm. Not in the supernatural realm. In the supernatural realm, your desire is an utterance. Your expectation is an utterance. It's like a man knocking and insisting that the door must open. And Jesus said, him that knocketh, to him the door must be open. Him that seeketh must find. How do you seek in the spirit? You seek in the spirit by creating a desire. You can never be anointed until you have a desire for anointing. You can never be rich until you have a desire to be rich. So there is nothing wrong in having desire for wealth. The only problem is when your motivations are wrong. When a man is talking about wealth, there's nothing carnal about it. The only thing carnal about it is if he's looking for wealth for pleasure. If he's not looking for wealth for something that advancing God's, advances God's purpose, then that wealth is for a carnal purpose. But if the man wants wealth because he wants to improve the lives of people, even God will help him not to that desire. Have you not read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20? He said, God is able to do. God is only able to do according to what? What you think or ask. If you don't generate that desire in your mind, God will be limited in your life. Because God can be limited. In Psalm 78 verse 41, the Bible said they limited the Holy One of Israel. Most of you are here asking God to please help you. But you are actually the limitation God is having in your life. You want God to bless you, but you don't have the desire to walk as a great man. You don't have the desire. You are satisfied with your mediocre level. And then you are at that level you think is humility. Mediocrity is not humility. Timidity is not humility. It's a curse from your bloodline. There are many people that you have to kick them into greatness. Because no matter how you tell them, they say no, they don't want to show themselves. And they remain timid, buffeted, and they cannot impact their generation. Because they were never taught that you will only have what you desire. He said, through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man having separated himself, intermeddles with all wisdom. You cannot break into dimensions until desire separates you to seek it. Spirituality is not just when we gather and we are praying. Some of us want to raise cripples. When I go to my place of prayer, sometimes I sit down and I, I close my eye and see myself raising cripples in stadiums. I see it. If the picture is not coming, I go and look for who has it. And then I go and play Kobus Van Rensburg. I go and play Pastor Chris Yoakilome because I'm trying the picture is not coming. So I literally, mechanically generate a desire. And so as I look at it over and over, I begin to create the desire. And so when I'm going for a healing crusade, me too, I wear my white suit. If you like, call it copying. That is your business. I have seen it. I have desired it. I force my way into it. It's called dominion. And today, like joke, it's happening like water. Two days ago, I was in a movie. In the name of Jesus, growth dematerialized. Somebody called fearfully from the Caribbean because what do they call it now? Fibroid of three years. The stomach was already protruded. The fibroid vanished. It vanished. And when they told me, I wasn't shocked. 
Because I've already seen it in my spirit. So when it happens now, I'm not surprised. I'm only surprised when it doesn't happen. And so when I come for a meeting and I pray and nothing happens, I go back to God and say, why didn't it happen? But when it happens, we give God praise. Because we've seen ourselves. You don't know what I've seen myself doing. Oh! Oh my God. Oh my God. If I play, if I play what happens in my head to you, you will run. This Abuja, a day we come, no hall will accommodate us. We will have a meeting in the stadium, we will pay for other halls. People will be streaming. I've seen a day coming when, when we are coming out. It's not only me, it's a squad. A squad. 30 of us, see, 30 will come out. And the moment we come out, cripples will start rising. Everybody will be doing his own thing. Oh my God. I have seen myself appear on the altar. It's not, <laughs> you don't know what we think. That's why God is processing us. Because if everything happened now, even we, it will kill us. If I come to this hall and it's empty, I will fall sick. I have seen this hall packed. So it cannot but be packed. Because I want to impact people. And it's not just about the crowd. I want to see everybody who comes here. Come back every day with testimony of signs and wonders. It's not just man of God pray for me this apple. Man of God. No, 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 no. The usher shows up and said, I was coming. I saw a, a, a cripple at the gate. So I brought him. When you say, where is the cripple? Bring him. You will think they are pushing a witch here. The cripple will throw to the altar. Because he didn't bring him. He walked him into the building. Those are the things you see. Because God responds to your desire. Proverbs 10.24 he said, the desires of the righteous shall be granted. The desires of the righteous. So if the righteous doesn't have desires, there's nothing that will be granted. But if the desire, if the righteous has a desire, then God has found something he will grant. There are too many empty people walking around. And that's why anything that happens to them satisfies them. We thank God for everything we see, but there is more. Because our appetite is big. You can't rule in this world unless you have enormous desires. Find out from everybody making impact. The only thing we do is to sanitize it so that it's not selfish. A man who doesn't see himself being big can never be big. It's a principle that every great man knows. And they apply it. Why do you think great men are always in solitude? The reason is because you can't generate desire in a noisy environment. So many times you have to leave people, leave the challenge and hide somewhere because you want to incubate of something. And when that desire grows, a point comes. You see these things happening and it happens with ease. The reason many people's prayers are not productive is because even when they are praying, the prayer is not imparting on anything. But when a man who has desire lifts his voice and is praying, the prayer has a lot of raw materials to convert to finish goods. Because by desire... He has created a word in the spirit. In Psalm 21 verse 2. He said, Thou hast given him his heart desire, and thou hast not withholding from him the request of his lips. You have given him his heart desires. People don't have tangible results and tangible testimonies because they don't desire nothing. In Psalm 145 verse 19, he said, He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. There are many people who fear the Lord, but they don't have desires. So even though God appreciates their fear of him, there's no desire to fulfill. You've got to have extraordinary desires to provoke and to command extraordinary results. I heard Bishop Oedeko made a statement. He said, thank God we are where we are. He said, but we would have been shocked if we are not here. We thank God for where we are. We are grateful about it. But we are not surprised that we are here. We would have rather been shocked if we are not here. Who talks like that? 
except a man who through desire have gone into his future and come back to live it. Desire helps you to live the future before you relive it in the natural. But when you have no desire, anything that happens to you, you deserve it. When you see people who are laboring so hard, doing so much, they are trying to meet up with the magnitude of their desire. Too many people have no desires. The second principle that makes for greatness and imparts dominion power is the principle of visualization. These are the real spiritual realities, these ones. If you don't have these ones, your prayer will be a religious prayer. I'm telling you why a lot of people are shallow. They think spirituality is religion. It's a deliberate thing. I was sharing with them two days ago. I told them, we who are in the civilization of light are backward. Those who are in the civilization of darkness, they have gone far ahead of us. The things available to us in light are the things they copied. But they have perfected those things in darkness a thousand times more than we that have it originally in light. If witches have meetings now, nobody is budgeting for transport. Everybody will just appear and it's not a miracle. We are dancing and happy that God gave us money, we bought a bus. It's a good testimony. But it means we are in the stone age in the spirit realm. Because according to updated profile in the spirit realm, from 1930, which is come to their meetings by, by location. If you talk about by location now, the whole body of Christ will rise up against you and say, this is heresy. Meanwhile, the Bible said, Enoch, who was seven after Adam, walked with God and was not because God took him. The Bible spoke concerning Elijah in 1 Kings 18, from verse 8 to 11, when Obadiah met him, he said, go and tell Ahab, I'm here. Obadiah said, I will not go. Because I know that the wind will carry you. Elijah was traveling by the wind. We have lost those inheritances because we have not seen deep in the spirit. Meanwhile, witches have preserved this heritage. Every time they come for meeting, they show up. And their meetings, they don't pay for their venues. We are attacking God now that we have paid for our venue. We have been able to pay for one year. LED screen. When they look at us, huh, this is a testimony of, of 1440. This is a testimony of 1419. How come you are giving it in 2022? In 2022, you are still happy. Because we, we, when we build cathedral, oh my God, come and see dedication. The whole body of Christ, we gather. And then the witches are wondering, ah, that means in the spirit we are their elder brothers. Because sometimes when they want to have meeting, they will go to India. There is no immigration that can stop them. They don't need passport. They will have meeting one night and return. The next meeting will be in Greece. The next meeting will be in Pakistan. The next meeting will be in United Kingdom. But see a Christian who goes to the UK. He will snap at the airport and stand like this. God has helped my ministry. If we go to Ghana, we will stand at the airport like this. God accept us. I went to Zambia when they welcomed me. I stood like a man of God. They welcomed me at the airport. After laboring in the plane for eight hours, a witch would do havoc in eight hours. He can't sit in one location for eight hours doing nothing. And then when we show up, we stand. Sometimes we even frown to show that we are in the spirit. <laughs> That's the civilization of 1441. We are doing it in 2022. But the problem is what? We don't see beyond our environment. We don't see. We are blinded by civilization. We are blinded by the things happening around us. That's why we are still fighting for dress. Fighting for who is leading choir. Fighting for who, who led prayer. Meanwhile, you led prayer, nothing happened. But you are interested that, that at, during the 20th, 20th minute of the prayer, the tongues I was preach praying. If you hear those tongues. <laughs> I'm saying this so you understand how dominion works. What are you seeing? 
What are you seeing and what do you desire? It will determine how far you can travel in this realm. Because the realm is governed by laws. And one of the principles that makes for advancement is the principle of visualization. In Psalm 23 verse 7, he says, as a man thinketh in his heart, as a man sees himself in his heart, he says, so is he. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 to 18, Paul was admonishing us. He said, I know your circumstances may want to distract you. He said, refuse to look at them. Because when you get to where God is taking you, you will be a commander over those circumstances. So he said, why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things that are unseen. The reason is because we have been able to go away from our light affliction. He said, our light affliction are but for a moment. They work for us an exceeding weight of glory. So refuse for your circumstance to get your attention. Don't let your circumstance become what you focus on. There is something that is higher than your circumstances. Because you will become what you see. If you keep looking at the problem, you will become part of the problem. But when you look away from the problem and look yonder, you will bring a technology that will supersede that problem and will make you become a joy of many generations. That's why in Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3, he said, if we say we are dead in Christ, he said, then our affection, our attention should be on the things that are above. He's not trying to mentor us into religion. He's trying to let us know that there are dimensions above that we should download into this world to dominate this world. If our attention is earthward, we will be regulated by earthly earth. That's why today is the government that determines the progress of the church. If Obasanjo did not bring GSM, they today would have been writing letters. So if the government doesn't go forward, the church will remain backward. If the government shuts down internet now, our live streaming all ends. Our Zoom meetings end. But do you know that the government can't stop the witch that is in your village? If he wants to send a message anywhere, he will send it any day, any time. If they want to have a meeting, if they like, the government should bring any rule. He can't stop them. Because they are seeing Hades. And everything they see here, they invent into it. But we can't see beyond it. So we are limited by our sight. And this is why it's important for any man who wants to have dominion to begin to see beyond his environment. Because you can only have what you see. In Genesis chapter 14 verse 13, Abraham wanted to be blessed. And God was trying so hard to bless Abraham. He couldn't. Until God told Abraham, this is the cure. I have told you in Genesis 12 verse 1, I will bless you and make you a father of all nations. Genesis 12 verse 1 to 3. But you can never become a father until you are able to see it. So he said, lift up your eyes from where you are standing. Look towards the north, the south, the east, and the west. As far as your eyes can see, I have given to you. So as powerful as God is, he could not make Abraham a father of all nations, even though he had promised. So for that to happen, Abraham must first of all see it. God told Abraham, I will bless you with a child. And God tried and labored and could not. Until in Genesis 15 verse 5, God told Abraham, look up if you can count the stars. He says, so shall thy seed be. And the Bible said, Abraham believed and it was counted to him for righteousness. That was when Abraham became a father of Isaac. Abraham became a father of many nations when he looked up. If you can't see, you can never have. Even if an angel promised you. Even if God promised you. That's why many people receive prophecy. And they come back after six months and say, all these fake prophecies. All these fake prophets. Five of them told me I'll be great. I am seeing where I am. They told you you'll be great, but you are looking down. How can you be great? Did you not read that God told Abraham, I will make you a father of many nations. And Abraham could not. Until Abraham was able to see. This is why your eyes are not meant for casual sight. Job said, I have covenant with my eyes. I will not look upon the virgin. Because Job knows that his reality is a product of what he sees. There are many people here today, they want to be anointed. 
But every day they are seeing pornography. And when they see pornography, they provoke a desire and nurture the energy. You are, anoint, you are actually very anointed. But it's in darkness. That's why now you have four girlfriends. The utterance you should have used to win souls, you have used them to win women. <laughs> you will have what you see. It's a law. Christians think spirituality is when we come for prayer meeting. And everybody is doing... Hmm, hmm, hmm. That is beautiful. If the Holy Ghost is tearing you, but after you generate that energy, what do you see? What do you incubate upon? That's where the real spirituality lies. If you keep seeing the wrong things, you will pray all your life and you will be a poor prayer warrior. There are many gallant prayer warriors today that are failures. I know them when I was growing up. They wear big plain trousers and sandals. When they are coming to your house, they, their Bible is so big that they wrap it in leather. Because they are prepared under the rain, under the sun, they will preach the gospel. Because they never saw themselves driving in a car. So sometimes when it's raining, they show up with hunger for God. They have hunger for Jesus Christ. And even inside the rain, they show up. Thank God for your hunger. But if you had some wisdom, your hunger would have been packaged. You see them wear one standard for four years. And when they put the standard at your door, you come and look. You will have a body to sow a seed instantly. We are frustrated. And this is not just about ministry. It has to do with your business. You are in that company. Have you seen the sons of the born women? When they come, they come with audacity. They act as if they own this country. Because they have been taught these principles. So they don't take anything for granted. When they are coming for an interview with you, they say it's theirs. They know they will win it. And they talk like that, they see like that. If they come to your area, they are not just looking for a house. After two weeks, they are asking how much do they sell this property. And two people can come to your village. And after six months, they buy the whole land in that area. And then you are wondering what is going on here. They don't see that village as your village. They see it as another settlement of their religion. Our sight is too limited. That's why our manifestation is dwarfed. Who told you you must be connected to the president to be great? The president is not the only authority that be. There are many other authorities and there are many other resources in the spirit that can make for your advantage. But what can you see? See first and allow the rest for God. But many don't see. They only look at their circumstance. When you sit down with some people, you just want to give them money, let them go. Because they will choke your spirit. They sit with you for two hours and they complain for two hours how nothing is working. Nowadays, if people start and say, I, I say, how much is it? This is the much I can help you with. Take. Thank you. Go. Don't choke my spirit. Because some people, if they finish complaining, even you that God is helping you, now become afraid. Somebody will come and tell you and say, Ministry is hard. I started in Obamosho, it failed. I went to Lagos, it failed. I now went to the north, thinking that the north is easy, it failed. Nobody can succeed in the... Ah! You don't know that they have planted a seed in your spirit. Don't hear such, don't see such. Because you are a processor. What you see, you process into existence. That's how you were built. And that's why, if you want to dominate your world, you must become very selective of what you hear and what you see. Only see what works. I don't follow people who are talking. I follow people who have results. You will never hear me quote anybody who is failing. When I quote a man, he knows it and he has lived it. So anything he says has an implication. That's how I see. If I close my eye today to see a man of God, I'm either seeing Bishop Oedeko or I'm seeing Pastor Chris or Akilome. See, there are too many results. And sometimes I look into Paul, I look into Enoch, I look into Moses. I don't have time to, thank God you are struggling, God will help you. And if I can help you, I will support, but I will never look in your direction. Because you become what you see. You are a lawyer, all your friends are struggling, you are the best among them. When you come, they say, Odogu. You say, mm. God is, the Lord is helping us. You are about to drown. If you are wise, go and begin to look for a son. Because when you meet a son, he will tell you how he went to court for 25 years and he didn't lose a case. You will now discover that your two years success is nothing. Immediately your appetite will change. Immediately your boundary will change. 
You will now tell yourself, if this man goes to court for 25 years without losing a case, me too, I will go for 30 years. Somebody tells you, I just closed this case now, they paid me 2 billion. You now say, ah, do they pay 2 billion naira for cases? I thought court cases is to earn 40,000, 50,000. The moment you leave that man, you will conquer 1 million, even though you have not handled it. Because you cannot catch it. Your faith can catch it. Too many people are walking about with mediocres. Don't allow sentiment to destroy your life. That's the pain of the poor man. That's the pain of the defeated man. He wants to live around people who are, sent, who are sentimental. They hold themselves and cry all night. When they finish crying, they go out, two of them, and they drink Gary, and they come back. They sit down, and they say, I love you. I love you. You will die without impact. All this weak life, defeated life, of hanging around people who come and tell you, you have tried. Don't worry. It will be better. Get out from that company. There is somebody who is five years younger than you who is shaking his world. That's the man you want to look at. And then when you see him, you ask yourself, does this guy have two heads? What is it that makes him do this thing? When you come back to what you are doing, you will tell yourself, thank God for this level, but there's more. There's more. There's more. What are you seeing? You will become what you see, whether you like it or not. There is no prophecy that can change it. You must become what you see. That's why you have to pay the price to see correctly. Some of us here, our biological parents can be our mentors. You don't know. You will be sentimental and say, but it's my father. You will die. Your father's biggest achievement is, to, is a bicycle. And then you come, you say, ah, it's my father. What do you want me to do? As much as you can, bless him, honor him. But when you finish, go and look for the man who is going where your future looks like. <laughs> I wish you heard me. River flow. In your church, once again, let it on it be seen. God told you you will be a president. And your father, who is a farmer, is your mentor. You will become the president of all farmers. <laughs> you will be president of all farmers. There's no sentiment about destiny. Too many people are defeated in life because of sentiment. My father is not a preacher. Then I will make the mistake of saying my father is my mentor. <laughs> what you see is what you become there's no prophecy that can change it it's a principle number three principle of verbalizing these things are so basic that many people miss it In Mark chapter 11, verse 22. In the preceding verses, they were walking into Jerusalem. <laughs> I'm seeing an Okada rider now that is about to shift. <laughs> There's somebody towards my left here. You are into Okada business. I'm seeing the person is something just changed in your, in your paradigm, your mental paradigm. You're about to shift. What we say here looks like a joke. If we start sharing testimonies, you will jump. When we came here, the person who is a, who used to, his job is to, he's been in Abuja for years, but his job is to go and look for those who need equipment. He will now go and tell those who have it, and then he will collect the contract, the people will supply, he will give them the money and take it stipend. He has worked with us for two months, he has started his company. Is no longer a marketer. Is now a CEO of a company. What we are saying is not a joke. We know it. Tomorrow morning, I will be going to dedicate somebody who started an industry. All the machines have been imported. You will be complacent until you hear things that challenge you. That's why some of us are 25. We say when we are 40, we will be millionaires. Who told you it's age that makes a man a millionaire? You were taught wrongly, so you see wrongly. The third principle of dominion is the principle of verbalization. 
And so in Mark 11 verse 22, Jesus told them, have the God kind of faith. He said, if you say to this mountain, that means if you don't talk, that mountain will remain there forever. God can be living in your house, but the mountain will be there forever. Welcome. Please sit down. How are you doing, sir? He said, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed, and you do not doubt in your heart, you will have whatsoever you say. Jesus didn't say, tell God about the mountain. That means, mountains will remain in your life, or mountains will be cleared from your life, whether you talk or you don't talk. So why some people are removing mountains, others are planting mountains. Because if your walls will remove mountains, it means your walls can plant mountains. It is not possible. It is not going to work. We will fail. You don't know that you have been planting mountains in your path. Because if you command the mountains, they will go. And if you command the mountains, they will go. Then if you command the mountains, they will also come. So there are many people today that have planted too many mountains on their path. Because they only say the wrong things. That's why the Bible says, let no man in Zion say, I am sick. He didn't say no man in Zion will be sick. He knows there are some who can be sick. He said, but let no man in Zion say, I am sick. Why is that so? Isaiah 44 verse 26. He said, I the Lord, I confirm the words of my servants. I perform the counsels of my messengers. Listen to me. Even if I was dying on the sick bed today, if you meet me, I will tell you we don't die. I will tell you, we don't fall sick. I will tell you, we cannot be sick. Because God is committed only to what I say. And so I wouldn't use my words to shut God out of my ecosystem. He said, I perform the words of my servants and I confirm the counsels of my messengers. In Isaiah 43 verse 26, he said, put me in remembrance of my word. He said, according to your words, you will be justified. You think God is not aware of the hardship? You think God is not aware of the struggle? You think God is not aware of the failure? Okay, now that you have confessed only the wrong things, how has that helped you? When you see men who rule, they never make mistakes with words. Words are too important. In fact, if you say the wrong things to them, they will not keep quiet and go. They will respond to you dear before they go. If you make a mistake and say this thing may not work, they will not say that's your opinion. They will tell you it must work. Because they understand the power of words. That's why Jesus said there is no idle word in this kingdom. Every word you speak, you will account for it. Because you contribute either positively or negatively to creation. Let eternity be seen. River flow. River flow. Some people want to describe their circumstance. And in attempt to describe it, they heap all the negation on themselves. When God came into the world, Moses was watching what was happening from wherever it is that God kept it. And Moses said, the earth was void. Genesis 1 verse 2. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God had been brooding upon the darkness. Why didn't God make mention of it once? He said the Spirit of God was brooding upon the deep. God never spoke about the darkness once. When God wanted to speak, He was focused at saying only what He wanted to see. Light be. If Moses didn't write Genesis, if it was God that wrote Genesis 1, you will never know about darkness. Because he will never mention it. He knows how the systems work. What you say is what you have. Too many people have heaped evil on their own path. You check some people's vocabulary. I am sick. It will not work. I will die. It's a thousand times more than it will work. I cannot be sick. I will not die. Some of us are rugged and dogged about this. If you like, kill yourself. Go and carry a babala and curse me. I will stand and say, it can't happen. On these matters, I am not careful to answer you. I am not, whatever you, whoever you think you are, 
there is one of the greatest patriarchs of the faith in this country. Bishop David Oedeko went to see him and he told him, you are not called. I know you didn't know the story. A man that everybody look up to, you are not called. Bishop Oedeko stood up. <laughs> it's God that calls a man, not a man. <laughs> Today, he doesn't need to explain it to anybody. Do you know how people grow? Words can make or mar you. That's why I tell people all the time, you are the first prophet over your life. Don't wait for a great prophet to come and say, ah, I'm seeing that you are an apostle. <laughs> you will suffer. Because you may not meet that prophet until you are 65 years old. Verbalization. Too important. Principle number four. Energy balance. Energy. The kind of energy you carry per time matters. I quoted already for you from Ephesians 4.20. He said God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you ask or think. He now added something. He said according to the power that is at work on your inside. If you don't carry a, an energy that is consistent with what you want to see, you will never have the result. The people in the world understand this and they apply it well. They call it morale. So when they are going to play a football match, they gather themselves and they tell themselves why they will defeat the opponent. They tell themselves why the opponent is not a match. They tell themselves why they will, they will win this match. What they are doing is that they are trying to configure themselves into the right energy. Because if you enter that field with the wrong energy, even though you are more powerful, you will be destroyed. In the days of old, when kings go to war, if the army is arrayed, they bring orators. And when the orator is done talking, what he will do is that he will so charge them up, that even though the army they are going against is five times greater than them, they will charge into that army. And it will appear as if nothing happens. If you study the Bible in Joshua chapter 7, when Israel was going to fight AI, in fact, the army of Israel said that AI is a walkover. That with just 2,000, 3,000 men, they will take AI. But because Achan erred against God, what God did was to reduce their morale. They went to that battle. When the nation turned against them, they ran. And they killed them they ran back to their own camp. Because if your energy is wrong, your results will be wrong. If your energy is right, your results will be right. When you start talking about energy, Christians will tell you it's new age, it's new age theology, that you are using their words, you are using... These are realities in the spirit. These men just came to understand it. They didn't create it. If you are going for an interview and you don't have the right energy, you will be shocked. You will fail before you start. That's why many times we worship God. We pray in the Spirit. We hear testimonies. We tell ourselves things. What we are trying to do is to summon the right energy. If I'm coming for a miracle service, I won't start talking like this. It's not because the anointing of my life changed, but the energy I come into the meeting will matter. If I'm coming for a revival meeting, I won't start talking like this. I will talk from a different energy level because the result I want to achieve is different. I'm a, I, I came here to talk to you about foundations. That's why I kept myself calm. If I come for a revival service, if my energy is not right, I can worship here for 30 minutes until my energy is corrected before I start talking. Because I know beyond the words, there is an energy that is communicated. Every man who is victorious sustains the right energy. That's why you see the wealthy spending money in luxury. It's not just because they love it. They want to sustain a level of confidence and energy. So they buy the car that nobody has. The reason is because when they come out of that car and they look around, it reminds them that they are bigger than everybody. They are called goose of ostentation. They don't just buy it because they love luxury. If a wealthy man is coming for this meeting, he will make sure that he comes when everybody is seated. So that when he walks in, there is a way he walks in. When they are leaving the meeting, he will drive out when everybody is outside. When he's coming for a conference, 
It is ogre. Don't think when things that happen is a joke. It's not a joke. When you see them coming, they drive four cars. And when the cars pack, pour, pour. The way they even break is to arrest the attention of everybody. Then four bodyguards come out here. Four come out here. And then they open the door. Everybody's on black suit with, with black glasses. Then the man will appear with a different color. He will never wear the same color with the bodyguard. And then when he steps down, there's a way he walks. If he doesn't carry that energy, he can't control everybody. They know how these things work. It's only a poor man that throws in and says, God is helping us. Well, there'll be anything. Even they, they are walking like this. <laughs> you are joking. When well, you now say, come up to the platform, then you start shivering. Me? Why me? What? what? He will now come up and say, you know, the, the kingdom of God suffered a violence. A violence. Take it by force. Even those who came to the meeting with expectation, when they see you, they will say, Kai, I should not have come for this meeting today. You need to see us when we go for crusade. I wear nothing but white suit. And every other person coming with me wear different colors. And when you show up, you walk into the meeting. You come like the person with the solution. And the moment they see you, the atmosphere changes. The morale changes. It's deliberate. It's called walking some miracles. They are walked. And you need to arrest and calibrate their expectation. Calibrate their morale before you come up. When you come into such meetings, you keep quiet. And when you walk, you walk with the weight of the anointing. And then when you sit down, you are first of all quiet. <laughs> Even the cripple is waiting for you to say, stand up. You have stirred him. That's how it works. There are mysteries in the spirit. Many don't know it. Why do you think when you go for political rally, they wait until the stadium is full? They are actually calling the governor and the president that the stadium is not yet full. Wait. When the stadium is full, then they drive in. And when they are driving in, they don't park where others park. They drive to the stage. The moment they come, everybody starts shouting. You will literally feel that thing come on you. You will feel it. That's how you rule. You must be conscious to create your energy. Do you know why we worship? Do you know why we pray? We are trying to sustain an energy level. Because sometimes the news you hear want to choke you. Sometimes fear wants to choke you. You rise above it. And when you carry the right energy, you come into a place, you create the change. Everybody making impact knows this. Whether in light or in darkness. Only Christians don't. Only Christians don't. You want to have dominion? You must understand these principles. All the laws I'm about to teach you now, they work within the atmosphere of these principles. There are six laws I will give you quickly before we close. What I'm sharing with you today is not something to hear and be excited. It's something to take with you and practice. When next you are going to walk, don't throw into the walk and carry your shoe in the bag and wear slippers. When you reach, you say, sorry, I'm late. You drop your seat. Your boss will trivialize you. When you rush from home, when you come into the the office. Stop. Take your time. Breathe in and breathe out. Let anxiety go down. Do your makeup afresh. If you are wearing a tie, adjust it. Wear your shoe. And when you come down, change your posture. That's how kings walk. When you walk into that office, even your boss who wants to talk to you carelessly, he will adjust himself and speak with respect. Dominion is deliberate. It's worked. I talk to you like this because I want to help you. When you throw in carelessly, they will underrate you. Don't you know this thing we are doing here? If we don't put ourselves in order, somebody can walk into this place and want to underrate you and say these people are young people. You don't dare think like that. If I stand before you, you will know that a ruler is standing. You will know. Nobody will tell you. You will know. <laughs> It's a deliberate thing. And it's not about money. You can have one shirt, one trouser. Before you go out, even if it's around 11 p.m., wash it. Blow it until it dry. Iron it. 
When you are going out talking, stand with confidence. Nobody knows how many. Unless you tell them. That's how you rule in life. The day of timidity, the day of mediocrity is over. Some of you enter relationships. The first one week they respected you until they discover you are common. And then the guy who will open door for you, the guy who will call you and speak with courtesy, suddenly you call and say, how are you? It's not because your beauty changed. They discovered you don't have gravity. You don't have gravity. Don't trivialize yourself. He you said you are a king and you are a priest. And there is a code that governs princes. Don't trivialize yourself. You can be selling leaf in the market. You will do it with honor. You can be selling slippers. You will do it with dignity. Because the value you place on yourself is what people will address you with. When you take yourself for granted, nobody will take you serious. But the way it starts is with the energy you carry on your inside. These are principles that regulate life and brings about dominion. This is not new age. These are the principles of the kingdom. Did you read about Jesus? Jesus was about to enter the city. They trekked all the way for days. When they came close to Jerusalem, Jesus coupled himself and waited. He said, go into the city and look for a court. Bring it to me. <laughs> See you. <laughs> Why didn't he trek into the city? Why didn't he trek? He waited. He said, get one that has not been ridden by any man. He said, when they ask you, tell them, the master has need for it. The master. Who is the master? When you hear the master, you may think it's Herod. And because you don't want to enter problem, you will leave it quietly. Whether it's by the anointing, whatever it is, you, you will withdraw yourself. And when he showed up, he was riding into the city. People were dropping their garments, dropping palm fronts. They said, stop these people. Why are you behaving like this? I thought Jesus would have ignored them. Jesus said, even if they stop, he said, the stones, the stones will rise. The people, <laughs> they, went, they went back. Strange things. He knows how it works. That's why it's called walking of miracles. If I come here for a miracle service with jeans and shirt and say I'm anointed, I stroll in. And I say, you know, Jesus wants to heal us today. Ah! Those who don't know you before will say, is that the man of God? Ha! Ah, why did you bring suffer me to come here? You will have to exercise the atmosphere and help their faith before they are able to release. But there's a way you walk into the beauty. Your appearance alone helps their faith. It's a deliberate thing. It's called energy. Many people will not teach you. This is what they do. When you see men of God and they record them by mistake at the back, you see them talking, shaking hands when they are about walking into the hall. They couple themselves. And then some will walk in like this. Have you ever seen a man of God snap like this? When they are snapping. Do you think it's spirit posture? They can be joking if they want to snap. How many men of God do you see on poster? <laughs> they are called the mysteries of dominion. That's why for those of you who are too casual, life takes you for granted. Because you approach life with the wrong energy. This is not manipulation. You condition yourself until it becomes your status quo. Because there's a, there's a code of nobility. There are things kings don't do. Have you ever seen your governor driving and the convoy stop and he say, I want to ease myself. You are walking everywhere. You stop by the gutter. You stop by the market. You say you want to ease yourself. And you say you will be a governor. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. 